Hello everyone and welcome, welcome. Our class today is going to be Internet Safety and Security. Very glad that you're here with me today. Um, let me introduce myself. If you haven't been in one of my previous classes, my name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes at the Columbia County Library in Evans, Georgia, the Harlem Library, and also the Uchi Creek Now, the Grovetown Library, because we have our new building. I think I'm getting a little bit of light from uh, the window, which is kind of neat. Um, anyway, so I'm very glad that you're here with me today. So before our class gets started here, I'll go ahead and welcome everybody into the classroom. Feel free to post any questions that you have into the chat. And the big question I usually ask is, how can I help? Okay. So our topic today is going to be internet security, okay, safety and security. So we're going to cover a lot of topics. Some of our topics about safety uh, we do kind of cover in some of the other classes, the beginning of the internet class and stuff, and also the one that we talk about uh, buy, keeping yourself buying stuff online. But in this class, it's interesting because we get to add, to add on uh, some other topics like what a VPN is, talk about cyberbullying a little bit and some other topics too. So let me go ahead and show you what classes we have coming up uh, soon. This is our whole schedule for the month. Uh, next week we'll be doing, uh, a, I mean this week we did a whole bunch of different classes. We also did a, a, a hands-on Raspberry Pi class earlier this morning which is a lot of fun. We actually got the LED working. Uh, we had it wired a little differently than they had previously, but it's working, which is kind of strange. But anyway, and uh, we'll be doing some other fun projects next week. One of the things we'll be doing on the 10th is photography printing and virtual scrapbooking. We're getting ready, kind of the idea that someone may want to make a project for the holidays to give to somebody. And also, we'll be doing a gadget help on Facebook, Harlem's Facebook page. A live um, gadget help, so if you have any questions or anything, just stop by there at 11 o'clock on Wednesday and happy to answer any questions you have. Also, it's Thanksgiving, so we'll be doing a whole bunch of fun uh, projects with Scratch. We'll be talking about, I mean, we'll be doing uh, Let's Draw an Animated Turkey and also Let's Make a Turkey Feather Catch Game. So. Looking forward to that. That should be a lot of fun. If you're not familiar, we do have uh, free ebooks and free audiobooks through the library. We've actually changed over from a si previous system we had, which was RB Digital. We've now switched over to Libby. So do realize all you need to do to use the new Libby app for free audiobooks, free ebooks, just download Libby. If you, of course, have to have a, a, a uh, all you do, <laughs> sorry about that. All you need to do is when you install the app, do a search. It'll say what library you with. Don't say uh, Columbia County Library. Don't say Harlem. Don't say uh, Grove Town. Say Greater Clark's Hill Regional Library System, and then choose Georgia Download Destination and enter your library card, and then it should pull right up. Uh, as you know, we're staying set home and staying safe and everything with our virtual classes here. And of course, all our oh, we're not doing any on-ground classes or anything. So just realize that our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside holds pickup is available. And you can go to check out gchrl.org for details or call in the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channels for updates. Right now we're having a subscribe drive, so if we can get 100 people to subscribe to our YouTube channel, then we can get a customized uh, a YouTube uh, address. Or you can search YouTube for gchrl.org, uh, excuse me, gchrl videos, and our channel will pop right up. All right, so let's go right ahead. Whoops, sorry. So let's go ahead and let's talk about what we're going to cover today. And I'm actually going to go ahead and if you have any questions, go ahead and post that. And I'm going to post our handout into the chat so you can download it. 
what we usually do with classes we actually have it so everybody has a computer come into class and we have a handout we walk through and the best part about the handout it's something that you can take home with you as well okay All right, so posting that into the chat now, and I'll go ahead and open it. Give me a moment, it's loading for me so that I can show y'all. There we go. All right, so today's class is we're gonna be doing internet uh, security and safety as well. Uh, let me check one thing real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and disappear, and let's talk about what we're going to cover this afternoon. So we're going to talk about internet security. Let's talk about what we're going to cover. We're going to talk about a safe on, having a safe online connection. Okay. Also knowing your rights online. We'll talk about scams. We'll talk about email, texting. Uh, safety. We'll talk about what exactly is a VPN and do I need one. We'll talk about cyberbullying, malware, viruses, adware, and spyware. Okay. We'll talk about how to stop malware, password help, and tips. So before we get started, does anyone have any questions? Alright, so let's talk about keeping ourselves safe online. And one of the, I know you may be watching this as a replay. One of the big benefits is if you do come to class, you're definitely feel free to ask any questions that you have. And um, you know, let us know about our classes too. Alright, so safe online connection, secure online, um, excuse me, secure login. A big one is to make sure that when you're logging into a website that you do see the padlock on here or it says HTTPS. Oh, hey Mac, how are you? Glad you're here. Let's see, Google asked me if I want to search incognito. Incognito really is just a way, kind of we'll say it in, um, in this respect. So let's say you wanted to surf the internet just as um, there's no history track in any way so if you use incognito mode. So let's say that you were going to look for someone, a birthday present, okay? And you wanted to make sure you were browsing the, the internet and everything and you want to make sure that they couldn't look back at the history of course you can erase your history uh, of your web browser but you didn't want them to look and see what your search history was or anything like that you could use incognito mode now that's just for your browser your isp of course knows where you're going and everything like that uh, but that's really what that is so incognito mode mode is just not to keep a record of the websites you visited okay on that browser all right, so before you make a purchase online or when you log into a site, is your computer ready? Look for the address bar padlock symbol. 
uh, when entering credit card information, HTTPS, right here, which is what you want to look for, okay? HTTPS, uh, log into sites to prevent uh, Wi Fi sniffing, okay? So make sure it is padlock HTTPS. So let's talk about that a little bit. So basically, let's say that we have a bunch of folks here and they're at a coffee shop, okay? Or they're at a hotel somewhere, or they're someplace that has an open Wi Fi connection, okay? So they're all having a good time, enjoying the Wi Fi. They are connected to all of the same Wi Fi network, okay? Because that's the free Wi Fi that they're using. Now, the, everything's going well, but the problem is we have this one person over here. We got someone using their phone, uh, they're using their tablets, all kinds of stuff. Someone maybe might be using their computer. We've got this one person right here where he's connecting to the network too, but he's also grabbing some information that's unencrypted out of the air, okay? Is that possible if you're connected to the same Wi-Fi? Yes, it is. It actually is. So one of the things to make sure is that when you log into something that you do see the HTTPS or the padlock on there. More and more websites are really pushing the HTTPS, which means that it's encrypted between you and the website, especially if you're going to make a purchase with a credit card, check an email, or anything like that. If you're, if you're using the apps, let's say you're going to check your uh, bank statement or credit card information, maybe use the app, those apps on your phone, disconnect from a Wi-Fi uh, source just in case, and uh, use it that way. Those are usually, those are already pre-encrypted, so that's nothing to worry about. I'm just saying a little bit of extra security uh, disconnecting from the Wi-Fi if you wanted to. Now, if it's your home Wi-Fi, don't worry about it because you'd be the only people person that could connect to it, your friends or family that you give your password to. So this isn't really an issue at home, it's mostly an issue if you're sharing Wi-Fi uh, someplace, you know, around and everything. Okay, so how can we stop um, something like this happening? We'll talk about a VPN later, or of course, make sure that you see the HTTPS on there or you log into websites, okay? Now, when you're making a purchase online, the best recommendation I can give you is to use a real credit card when you buy something, not a debit card. The reason for this is uh, that when you make a purchase with your real Visa MasterCard and everything, uh, the best part about that is, is that if you do have something, you could actually a dispute if you had an issue with it and you could do that with a debit card but it's a lot harder to get the money back uh, for that so it really is best to use a real credit card in case there's any kind of fraudulent charges or anything there would be no out-of-the-pocket amount you know to dispute uh, as we say debit cards withdraw the money directly from your checking account immediately it's harder to recover other thing is you could set a low credit limit specifically for your you know purchases uh, the big thing is maybe even set it at you know three hundred dollars is your maximum a, a day and that could help out with with anything like that some banks and credit cards now actually offer a one-time used credit card number that would allow maybe that credit card number to be available for 24 hours and then when the 24 hours is up you know that cards not valid that card number is not valid anymore Another big thing is if you or a family member is concerned about the, you know, what we've talked about, you could actually get a, a gift card. Uh, one of the things about the gift card is, let's say you wanted to make, buy something at Amazon or, or um, eBay or something like that, instead of using a credit card, I could go to places like the Walmart, Target, Kroger, CVS, you know, Walgreens, all that. They had the big kiosks. Um, for for um, gift cards and just put twenty you know put twenty dollars down, get an Amazon gift card and then I can make purchases off the Amazon um, store. Okay, the other thing is you uh, could use what the gift credit card like a Visa Mastercard, but though some the only negative thing about those is they do charge to reach what they call recharge the card, meaning 
put money on the card. So it could be uh, $5, $6 or so. Um, the Walmart one, people talk very positively about that, it being a low price on that. And the real thing about that is, is that you put money on it. Once the money's gone, the money's gone, unless you recharge the, the card to put more money on it. And then you can make purchases online and then you're still safe, okay? A big one is how do we stop fraud? Well, we need to check our statements often. Um, I, I would recommend if you, have, if you have a credit card to download the app on your phone and basically make it give you an alert anytime the card has been used. And you know, I have one that actually pops up anytime I or a family member uses it. It'll pop up and give me the, the amount that was charged the card immediately. A few years ago, I actually had it go off three times one morning and I had not used the card and it was actually out of state and it uh, was like da 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 and I'm like oh no what is this looked at it immediately within five minutes I was calling my credit card company letting them know that was not me that was not the, my charges I was you know not in that state and they said sorry about this you know uh, thank you thank you they actually thanked me for calling them and letting them know about the charge which was interesting. Thank you for calling us. I was like, okay. And then they said, we're, we're canceling this card and we're gonna send you a new one, okay? So that's a really big help uh, right there is to be able to set it up so you know if you're getting uh, charged at all. That would allow you to kind of instantly know um, what's being charged to your card. All right, so let's talk about knowing your rights online in the United States online purchases you make um, with a credit card are protected by the Fair Credit Billing Act which limits your responsibilities for fraudulent or erroneous charges for $50 do you realize um, no, they normally never charge this in any way but just know that that's the law um, what the law says and this is actually from the uh, ftc.gov website consumer ftc.gov article dispute charges credit card charges okay uh, so this is here for your protection so if someone stole your credit card charged a thousand dollars to it you probably will never be charged the fifty dollars but do you realize the less what the law says is that's the most they could charge you would be fifty dollars okay so I have lots of uh, information here, lots of links here. Talking about more online shopping safety tips. So you can check out these other sites. The Federal uh, Trade Commission, Privacy and Identity, whoop, United States uh, uh, Computer Emergency Readiness Team, and also the StaySafeOnline.org has lots of great information on it as well. All right, let's talk about scams a little bit. So scam is a fraudulent or deceptive act or operation, usually for monetary gain. That's really the biggest one that we'll talk about is that if you think if you, something strange happens and someone's asking you something, they may be they're looking for money or they may be looking for information. So do you realize that? So what kind of scams to be aware of? Well, a big one is if it looks too good to be true, it probably is. I know that there's been a bunch of uh, scams uh, that have been going on Facebook. It looks like legitimate businesses selling things, advertising through Facebook. You click it, it looks like you're a legitimate site, then come to find out it's a scam or they may be sending you a product that is not as advertised. Okay. Other ones is uh, businesses like Quid Bids. I won't specifically say it's a scam. But quid bids and uh, the the deal one. Let's see. I'll show you that, and I'll talk about that for a second. It looks like they're auction sites, but they're deal dash. Looks like auction sites, but they're really not. And basically the way they work is you basically pay money
you pay money to um here, I'll put an or in there you pay money to um to ugh. <laughs> sorry you pay money to actually uh, bid so when you actually look at or looking for an item I'll show you this I won't full up say they're scams, but they're websites that you basically pay money to win stuff. So you see this here, you actually are paying money to, whoop, getting a lot of advertisements popping up, aren't we? You're actually pay, are paying money to bid, and some one person may get a really good deal on an item, but didn't realize that everyone else is out the money that they spent on that item okay so do realize that so recommend it I don't recommend it anytime that you could bid on an item and uh, if you don't win you don't you, you have spent money on it then I say no if I went to eBay and was auctioning um, bidding on something and I lost then guess what I shouldn't have to have spent any money okay if I win the item I pay the money I get the item the other one is Deal Dash. View it as a scam as well. It's the same thing. Some of these places you can spend up to 25 cents, 50 cents to bid on something. And then if you lose it, a lot of the times these are actually say they'd be happy to sell you at full price what the item is. Um, is. So basically the business uh, rakes in you know, hundreds, thousands of dollars from people that have, have um, not won anything and there you go right there so spending money to not win anything kind of like gambling but not in a good way <laughs> all right we'll talk about high shipping rates so big one is when you're making a purchase for something and i've had this issue where i was purchasing something on ebay it had a very high shipping rate but it still was cheaper than some of the other products because their initial price was so low so I purchased it it came in the mail it was a cord uh, for a computer and the computer cord did not work I even tested it it did not work did not um, hold a charge in any way contact the person the person said well I don't pay sh you can ship it back to me I'll give you money back but I don't pay for shipping back and I don't pay for um, you know refund your shipping price so it actually was going to at the end it was going to cost me more money to ship it back than I would have received so I didn't send anything but just realize to look out for that and look at the person's reviews especially all right another one is to look out for fake IRS or missed jury duty calls so someone contacts you says hey um, we're the IRS you owe us a bunch of money and they want you to pay money to them uh, they're or they're gonna like come arrest you tomorrow or something that's fake IRS does not work that way they send letters in the mail uh, the other thing is missing jury duty call someone says hey you missed jury duty today and this is one we definitely had here in the CSRA you miss jury duty you're in trouble you'd better um, you know get what now who are you what's your information what's your social security number what what's your address they start to ask all this question it's a find out information scam to for identity theft they actually don't ask for any money for the jury duty scam so just be aware of that not all scams will ask you for upfront money but if anyone's asking you to do anything like pay them in gift cards or if you have a family member saying they're paying somebody in gift cards this is why it's really good that if you do hear of a scam like what we're talking about here, let friends, family members know about it because it could help them not be scammed as well. Okay. All right. Another one is someone calls you, someone contacts you, emails you something saying that Microsoft or, uh, you know, Apple or whatever is going to be giving free computer repair. Do these steps, go to this website, download this software or something and it allowed them to have access to your computer and they'll work on your computer because they heard something was wrong with it. Microsoft and them don't do anything like that. The legitimate way that you find uh, computer repair stuff from the major companies is one, 
is your computer still under warranty? If it is still under warranty, then you would have the information on the box, maybe even on your computer, the phone number to call, let's say Dell or HP or Lenovo or any of them. And if your computer is out of warranty, they won't give you help unless you basically extend your warranty in some way. So they're not giving away any free, <laughs> free. And even if you were getting computer help with them, they basically would have to really verify that that is your warranty and they would have all that information and everything. Okay. All right. So let's talk about uh, to avoid scams. A really great place to go is the F consumer uh, scam alerts page and let me go to that real quick this is like their blog lots of great information on here 10 things you can do to avoid fraud I think you see a scam where can you report it this is the ftc.gov Federal Trade Commission they, they go into things about social security scams, IRS scams, text, phone calls, phishing scams, uh, fake check scam, and this is their um, recent scam alert. They have a whole bunch of different categories over here. The biggest one here is that someone's contacted you saying something. It's odd. You're like, hmm, I've never heard of this before. This is, this is different. This is strange. Um, I've even had it where... Um, someone was trying to contact me because um, I also have a small business that does accepts credit cards and they wanted me to overcharge your credit card for a service and then that they would send me um, the extra money back it, it was really strange but oh, they wanted me to overcharge a credit card and then send the money to someplace else it was very strange so what exactly was that well they actually had a stolen credit card number and wanted me to charge it um, I would have to give that money back and of course then I'd be mixed up in some kind of uh, check you know some kind of a credit card scam so make sure that's not you so if you do hear of something that you're like wow this sounds really strange this is odd um, then basically do a search go to this website see if there's any new scams that have come out there's ones about COVID Somebody, you overpaid your utility bill. You get a robocall saying you paid too much utility bill to make up for this mistake. They say you'll get a cash refund and a discount on future bills. All you have to do is press a number to get your money or discount. If you say to yourself, what luck, you might think this strange surprise will help you some uh, much needed cash money. Sorry, but not so fast. It's probably just another utility scam or at best a marketing trick to get your money so this is uh, very recent and of course you can actually click here to learn more detailed information about the scam don't press any num numbers hang up never get call your social security number or anything like that call your utility company by you know going to their website or whatever not the number the person told you to call so this is a very huge I would say it's a huge resource that FTC does for consumers uh, to watch out spotting scammers, imposters, threatening phone calls, reporting fraud, what to do if you get scammed. No non-flyers expect a letter from our from your stimulus check. All kinds of stuff. Just all always coming up with some kind of new way to try to scam someone. So just be aware of that. The other thing you can do is you can look into the Better Business Bureau if it's a business that you're not really sure about. Use online payments such as when making a purchase, use online payment services such as PayPal or Google Checkout. So if you're making a purchase of something and instead of just using their payment method, use uh, Google uh, PayPal or Google Checkout. So there is a go between. So if you did have any questions, you could contact them of course contact PayPal or Google as well uh, give out as little information as possible a reputable online retailer will never ask you for your social security number not sure contact then ask the seller questions lots of websites are very legitimate and 
they want to answer any questions you do have okay email them ask a question call them ask a question uh, they're very happy to answer any question I personally had a um, uh, it was a product I wanted to buy and I wasn't sure if the two the things would um, fit together uh, so basically I called up asked the there was a 1-800 number on their website asked a question about it and the gentleman said sure any other questions you have I said well I'm ready to make a purchase and go ahead and buy that I'm so glad that to know those two things will work together he said well I'm just a helpline uh, you actually make a purchase through the website so that made me feel better that it was basically just a call-in helpline uh, to answer any questions I have. As much as you try to avoid it, you might find yourself the victim of a scam. Do realize there is software that people can try to run to basically make up um, credit card numbers. Okay, so do realize that. So you can be very careful to never give out your credit card number. Um, you know, the, you keep it safe, but do realize it can happen where it could be guessed. Um, yeah, so you could report that might also report it to the Internet Crime Complaint Center, which takes a report of any kind of uh, scams or anything. So this is the Internet Crime Complaint Center.gov. So it's i3c.gov. This is part of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So basically they have, uh, oh, they've added some informa more information here too. Um, talking about ransomware frequency, frequently asked questions. And remember this is a .gov site, so only the US government can actually have one of these sites, okay? So there you go, right, filing the complaint, FBI uh, cyber strategy and everything. All right, so let's keep going here. Let's talk about email uh, texting safety, okay? So what exactly is a phishing scam with the PH? Phishing, a scam by which an internet user is duped as, as by a deceptive email message or phone call into revealing personal or confidential information which the scammer can illegally uh, for financial gain. Reference, um, we got it listed right there. So basically someone sends you an email, excuse me, an email and it may be let's say it looks like um, Amazon it says your $75 purchase is on the way click here for more information and you click there and you're like I didn't buy anything uh, recently you click there and it looks like it's an Amazon site but it's really not you clicked you fished you clicked on a link in an email made it look like a website you the, the real Amazon it, uh, the address isn't really amazon.com um, it's like a different address. You typed in your username, password, and now you've just given them your account information. Okay. So a big other thing to do is you click on someone sends you a website. You click on it. It takes you to a different website that's not real. Big thing is your bank will not email you or ask you for information. Like, oh no, hey, this is your bank. We forgot what your username and password is. Can you click here and give it to us? Um, you will not win anything by sending emails to 20 of your closest friends or anything like that. It doesn't work that way. Beware of check scams, which we talked about a little bit um, earlier that the website talks about. Basically, a check scam is that someone uh, basically agree contacts you. They say, hey, I'm going to send you, a uh, let's say, a check for $1,000. Can you cash that check for me? You can keep $200 of it and just send $800 of it back in um, gift cards or like a money gram or something like that. To me, I really appreciate it. Come to find out, it's not a real, um, excuse me, it's a real, it's a real, um, it's a real check from a real bank, but the problem is it bounces. So uh, if you check, if you cash that check at the bank to get the money, then your, your bank is actually going to want that money back. <laughs> because it, the check that you went in, um, it did not get its money back, okay? I mean, it wasn't a valid check, I'll say that. Didn't have money there, it wasn't valid. So just be aware of that. Never respond to unsolicited spam or email. Don't hit anything that says, hey, don't stop, don't 
send anything reply says hey stop sending me spam uh, one response or a hit from thousands of emails is enough for spammers to justify the practice in addition a response let the spammer know that your email address is active which makes it more valuable and more open to more spam okay the big one is never pay anyone with gift cards so you have a friend or family member that you're talking to and and they're like uh, you know Aunt Claire uh, she's really nice I've heard she made a new friend she talks to every day and she's been uh, to giving them gift cards what why she been giving this friend gift cards I don't know they go she goes to the store and buys about 20 different gift cards you know just twenty dollars and then she sends it to them that might mean that that family member is being scammed and you might need to step in and have a discussion and try to help them or talk to other family members and see what's going on too. We definitely don't want that to happen to our loved ones or friends or family. Never send your personal information, credit card numbers, password in an email. The reason is your email could possibly be hacked. I won't go into it today, but a good way to stop that from happening is to basically set up a two-step verification with your Facebook, your email, or anything. So if someone is trying to use a new device um, for your, you know, your to log into your account, you'd actually have to have their, they'd have to have your cell phone too, and of course have access to inside your cell phone because your the account would send a uh, like a text message with some numbers to your cell phone, and that's the only way that they could get into the account on a new device. Okay. Spammers can fake the format of Yahoo and other trusted sites, so be aware of that. Never follow a spam's email instructions to reply with the word remove or unsubscribe. Now, I will I will put this as, as but if you know it's a legitimate, if you went to, let's say, a grocery store or they said, hey, you want to sign up for a rent to a restaurant, say, hey, you want, hey, you want to sign up for our newsletter, we send out coupons, sure. Yeah, and you know that you did that, you signed up for that newsletter, sure, you can go to the bottom and say unsubscribe or just remove, and this will that'll stop that. I actually signed up with a uh, grocery store once, and I was basically getting what felt like an email or two emails a day, and then sometimes three emails a day from them, and I was like, well, it's a good grocery store, I only went there once, I'd like to go back there. I went to the bottom, hit the hit the um, settings of the email. It said change your you know email settings. Come to find out, I had automatically been signed up to receiving the monthly newsletter, the weekly newsletter, and the daily newsletter, <laughs> and also one other one that something about hot buys or whatever. So I really was receiving too many emails from them. I turned it back to the it sending me. The, um, the weekly one so then I was just receiving it once a week which I still was interested in but do realize that some of those may have different settings that you can check but remember if only the legitimate ones will say that be aware another one you could click and say uh, unsubscribe and you could notify them that that is an active email so they'll send you more spam never click on a URL or website address listed within a spam email even if you're like oh this looks like spam don't don't click on it as a joke even if the message tells you uh, that's how you unsubscribe there's also alerts that send your email address that's active can result in more spam never sign up with sites that promise to remove your name from a spam list although some of these sites may be legitimate most are actually address collectors if collectors uh, record your address they will value it more highly because it is active okay only communicate with people you know okay that's also a really really great uh, base rule right there only communicate with people you know what exactly is a VPN so let's talk about that this is a uh, kind of an addition here. I know we're going into some extra stuff, like I said. So my other classes that you you probably have seen or been in, uh, we talk about internet safety, security, but we don't go into some of our extra stuff. That's why we have this extra class 
to go more into detail about a VPN, cyberbullying, and some of even some of the other topics that we talked about. We kind of generalize them in the other classes. Okay, so what exactly is a VPN and do I need one? Well, if you remember earlier, um, well, I'll go ahead and tell you this. So exactly what is a VPN? Well, let's talk about this and we'll go back up to our chart. When we connect to the internet, we are giving an, given an IP address number. Let's say a whole bunch of numbers right there. Uh, this is one way our internet re requests can be tracked by our internet service provider and computer. This is a way that it normally just keeps track of which computer asked for what website. Okay. Now, if you didn't, if you had some issues where um, someone was tracking you in some way, or if you wanted to hold back, did not want to be tracked in any way, or you're concerned that you may have maybe going to some websites that are not using HTTPS, and you do want to view those websites because maybe you travel. There's a few options. One big option that a traveler could do is just instead of going and using the internet, let's say at a hotel or someplace, you could actually just connect up and use internet that you connect to your cell phone. Okay, That way it would be completely secure. Nobody else could connect to that internet as far as, you know, as far as that goes and um, you're completely secure. So that's one way that you can keep your connection more secure. And again, what we talked about was making sure that if it's important, if someone might grab the information out of the air, try to make sure it says HTTPS, like logging in, checking email, buying something online. So we have our, our person here, they're using their computer. Now I'm going to focus on the business traveler side of this. Okay. Why would a business traveler want to make sure that they do have a VPN or they only use the internet um, for that came with like they only connect to their cell phone to use the internet. And a lot of business travelers, their IT department will basically add a VPN to their computer, their, their, you know, laptops or whatever. And then when they go off, they say they basically want them to use it uh, for security issue for security reasons. So basically, here's kind of our normal person. This could be uh, someone's home as well, but we're going to pretend it's like a business traveler. So a business traveler just connects to the internet. They use their internet service provider like Comcast or anything, um, and then they connect to the internet. And only if they connect to something that says HTTPS are they actually encrypted between them and the internet. Now, the internet service provider could still uh, track what website she went to. That could be one thing that someone's concerned about. But the business traveler uh, may need to go out of the country, need to be in different locations. And there are some countries that do block um, certain websites to go to uh, just because of, uh, I guess you'd say, societal issues or something like that. So well, the reason to do that is if you have a VPN, you can actually con uh, connect with websites and it'll actually make it look like you are located in a different place. Okay, So a VPN can mask what your IP address is and encrypt what sites we surf. So all websites will then be encrypted. So that's a good thing for security. Um, so let's go ahead and let's talk about how that works up here. So once you have a VPN, here's our person right here, business traveler. They turn their VPN software on. It encrypts uh, to it. It encrypts it. It connects, goes through the internet service provider, and then it connects up to a VPN server, meaning a computer someplace else. So whatever VPN service you have, let's say you can have a VPN in Atlanta, LA, uh, uh, one in Toronto, Canada, or so forth, and going back and forth in different countries or whatever. Uh, the only negative part is it could slow down your internet connection. Uh, some of these work really hard to not do that at all. And it means that your internet service provider, or if you're in another country somewhere, would not know what websites you are viewing because the wherever, all that matters is where the VPN is. So let's say you went out of the country and you use a VPN to use the internet wherever you are. 
and then you connect to let's say a, a, a VPN in Atlanta okay so the VPN or computer in Atlanta requests the websites let's say yahoo.com it encrypts it sends the encrypted website back to the VPN software the VPN decrypts it and then you see um, yahoo.com and the internet service provider and everybody no one in between can see uh, what website you went to okay so a lot of the business travelers like I said will already pre have the VPN software on there just for security reasons so every single website the person goes to is encrypted and there can't be anybody like grabbing information at a coffee shop or anything like that now the next question is yes is that complicated yes it is complicated it's not it's gotten easier it's mostly like turning if you're using a VPN and it has automatic settings it's mostly like you turn your computer on you go to the software and you click the on button and that's pretty much what the user does it'll automatically connect to the closest or fastest VPN it can and it's not really anything technical that a person needs to know it's just kind of an extra step now here comes the question that I get asked a lot is a VPN for everyone no most users that use their home Wi-Fi use their smartphone to do basic tasks like check email or when connecting to important websites make sure they see the HTTPS uh, may not need a VPN ever okay so as long as you're you know if you've got yourself your emails and everything on your cell phone you're probably perfectly fine it's just a unencrypted information if you're on a, a sharing a Wi-Fi connection with someone else um, but that's it but like I said you could just connect to your um, other things too but as long as it was using the HTTPS like a log password type then you should be fine what does a VPN cost uh, most do have monthly fees attached with them there is a free one and I have the website listed there um, heard good things about that I played around with that one some it just only it gives you a very small amount of uh, data a month for free that's the only thing and I have a great article here it talks about all the the top VPN uh, services and it actually goes more in depth about it so there you go and it's even updated it for 2020 so they go through each individual they kind of explain VPN they go through each one and they kind of tell the good the bad or whatever and Norton has actually come out with the VPN as well with their service but Norton uh, big thing is it does not block it just is just for web surfing no other software is encrypted on in a, like a Windows or Mac uh, computer. Okay, so if you're using anything like a torrent, BitTorrent, or anything like that, it does not support that in any way. Okay. And another thing people will talk about making the, using a VPN to make it look like you're um, you're in Canada, so you can watch Netflix in Canada and stuff. Uh, so that's kind of neat. All right, so any questions about that? I know that's a big topic to talk about. It's a, a little bit different, but hopefully I've given you a lot of information. I hope my visual has explained it pretty easily, okay? So most people don't need a VPN. Just stay safe. Make sure you see, um, you know, the HTTP and everything. All right, so let's talk about um, cyberbullying a little bit, okay? So let's define the term cyberbullying. Now, cyberbullying can be of any age, okay? Any age can a person could be cyberbullied, all right? What we have going on here in our picture here, it's a young lady sitting at her computer, and then I know you can't really see it, but just kind of know that she's sitting there doing some work in social media and whatever she's receiving a bunch of messages that are really ugly and they're very mean-spirited to try to hurt her feelings okay and the sad part about it is the other family members may not even know that they're receiving stuff like that 
So define the use of electronic communication to bully a person, okay? Sense of name cyberbullying, typically by sending messages of intimidation or threatening nature. Many may be reluctant to admit to being a victim of cyberbullying, okay? Here's a big statistic right here. 59% of kids are experienced, have experienced cyberbullying at least once, but only 10% of kids ask their parents for help, okay? If someone is being bullied through social media, most sites have no have ways to, to block or remove offensive material. And there's a great website called stopbullying.com. Excuse me, .gov. Again, we have another .gov site, uh, official government site. <laughs> How do you know? It says .gov. There you go, right there. And of course, we have our HTTPS. So if I was, even though I'm not logged into this site, like I said, more and more websites are pushing HTTP, HTT, uh, HTTPS. I'm sorry, I couldn't talk there. So even if I was like at a coffee shop or somewhere, even though I haven't logged into this website, you can see at the top I have a padlock. See? connected and it says HTTPS so that means that the web browser is encrypted and the, between the server and me where the web website comes from so this site is even secure if I was like say at a coffee shop or someplace or at a hotel um, you know you'd be perfectly fine and safe all right this has some really good information on it. that's why I pulled it up it talks about state laws what to do, and remember this is a .gov site, so it, it's 100% accurate information on here. And if it's not, contact them and tell them, I guess. Uh, so it talks about all kinds of stuff, and they also have it in other languages as well. Digital media and apps allow children to communicate and express their creativity, yay. Connect with peers and share their feelings. However, they can be an avenue through which cyberbullying occurs. There are many types of apps and sites available for free that give users the ability to search for people and share or post information about them anonymously so that it could turn into hurt feelings. Social media has many benefits that must be balanced with the risks of it presents risks to be aware of include. Screening for harmful or con harmful content or website and apps varies widely. Content posts can be incorrect, harmful, or hurtful. Why are you so dumb? Can can be used to share harmful or adult content that don't even realize is going on. Privacy controls over who can view or access posted material vary across apps, and many users are not aware of how to use them effectively. Apps that allow for real-time user videos, the live stream, can be used to show bullying, violence, suicide, and harmful acts as they are happening because it's live streaming it. Some apps that include location information can be used to get personal information such as someone's age, current location, or where someone lives. Okay, apps and some some folks using the. Uh, Younger folks or older folks, it doesn't matter. I'll just say some folks using some of this stuff may not even realize that, like Snapchat could be sharing their GPS location, okay? With their friends, but still. Apps that support telephone calls do not show up on call log, or parents may not know who their children are talking to. Uh, WhatsApp, and also doing um, calls like through FaceTime or something, so there would not be a uh, not doing a FaceTime call, but a voice call. Um, and it would not be through the Wi-Fi or whatever. It would not be listed as a call going through. We have more information there, cyberbullying.gov, cyberbullying kids on social media. All right, so that kind of finishes up uh, our, our part talking about uh, cyberbullying. So let's go ahead to our next part. Let's talk about malware, viruses, adware and spyware 
okay? We have our zombie computer up here walking around. Malware is an, a, a term meaning malicious software, which is specifically designed to gain access or damage a computer without the knowledge of the owner including spyware, keyloggers, viruses, worms, and other malicious code that infiltrates the computer. Today, most of, most of malware is created for profit through forced advertising, which they call adware, stealing sensitive information, which would be spyware, spreading email spam through zombie computers. They take over your computer in some way. Maybe some of them you've given access to. They said they would do a free fix computer or whatever. And um, a ransomware trying to extort money from you. We know what you did. We know we have all your passwords. And uh, if you don't give us five hundred dollars, we're gonna put it on the internet. Something like that. So a computer virus is a type of malicious code or program written to alter the way a computer operates. A virus has the potential to cause unexpected or damaging effects such as harming the soft system software by corrupting or destroying the data. Spyware is like something that could be on your computer like a key logger recording what keystrokes you do. Spyware can remain dormant on your computer without showing major signs or symptoms. However, once the virus infects your computer, the virus can infect other computers on the same network, stealing passwords or data logging keystrokes, corrupting files, spamming your email accounts, and even taking over your machine are just some of the devastating and irritating things. What are some signs of a computer virus? Frequent pop-up windows. Pop-ups might encourage you to visit unusual sites or they might uh, prod you to download antivirus or other software programs. Changes your home page is a really big one. You, your your you, um, usual home page may change to another website, for instance. Plus, you may um, be able to unable to reset it. So you change it and you restart your computer, and then it changes it again. Frequent crashes. A virus can inflict major damage on your hardware. This may cause your device to freeze or crash. It may also prevent your device from coming back on. Unusual slow computer performance, a sudden change of processing speed can mean your computer is you know, busy in the background doing something else. Un uh, unknown programs that start up when you turn your computer on. You may become aware of the unfamiliar program that you start your computer or you might notice it by checking your computer's list of active applications. Unusual activities like password changes that could prevent you, you from logging into your computer. That's when you would really need uh, something like a um, either look at this up, try to solve it yourself, or take it to a specialist at a computer store. Let's talk about ways to stop malware, which we'll talk about. Hopefully you'll be able to stop it in its tracks. or before it gets worse. Run antivirus and malware protection software. One of the big things that malware can do is actually go in and turn the antivirus software off to try to protect itself. So do be aware of that. Run Windows Update a lot. More and more Windows 10 is pushing itself to be updated, which is a good thing. It can seem that it's annoying. There are ways that you can go in and tell it certain hours of the day that you never want it to do any kind of system update because um, that's your work hours. So you always need your computer ready for that. But definitely give it time to be able to um, you know, do it the other times. So download the latest uh, window browser version. A lot of our browsers, when we start, when we start them like Firefox or some of the other ones, it'll automatically uh, connect in there and see if it can I heard a beeping noise it'll log into there and uh, shoot what was I saying 
I don't know, something beat somewhere. All right, anyway. Uh, okay, so other thing is that uh, free antivirus programs are out there. Windows does actually come with its own virus per, um, program, so you could use that, the Windows Defender. It's already installed on Windows 8 and Windows 10, okay? Other ones are like free, uh, AVG free software. Kind of another recommendation. Download that and it, it's uh, free to install for personal use, not for business, okay? Of course, like I said, um, Windows actually does come with a free uh, antivirus software. Microsoft Security Essentials, the AVG, the big one here is the Malware Bytes. I really recommend that. Um, I've only ever used the free version of it. It's free for personal use and you just run it. It only runs when you run it, okay? Malware Bytes, and then they actually have a pricing for business. So, uh, and you see it's trusted by a whole bunch of different websites too. So if we do the free, it'll talk about all the things it'll do. And I run it about every month, every two months or so. The big thing about the malware uh, software like Malware Bytes is that it does actually look for malware and spyware um, more, uh, a little bit more than the, I guess you'd say the, the standard antivirus software that would pull it up because it will pull up what they call PUPs, P-U-P, Potentially Unwanted Programs. Not puppy dogs, but P-U-P. That can help a lot too. Make sure you don't have any browser add-ons. Um, they can actually tell which websites can be trusted. Um, if you have like different browser add-ons, Norton had one. I'm not sure if that's still available. Let me look and see real quick. Oh, I know what I know which one I want to recommend now. Anyway, this will actually talk about um, all kinds of it talks about the safe web searching. I don't think that they actually have this anymore. But anyway, it'll actually tell us about the definition of malicious code, phishing scams. Um, it'll talk about the most recent ones people will post on here, things, what, what are some of the new malicious things that are going on. Uh, it'll let the name of it. You can actually do a lot of research with this. It's called uh, safeweb.norton.com. But I think DuckDuckGo now has actually added a, there it is, it's an add-on. I don't want to add it right now, I just wanted to show it and see if I can find the, let's see. I don't want to add it, I just want to show the information about it. Okay, there it is. So basically DuckDuckGo is kind of the new um, add-on that's going around. I'll actually add that to my list here. And it helps, it's, it stops basically from you going to the wrong uh, website. And they actually have them built up for the cell phones too, add-on that you can do. Anyway, so it's trying to keep stuff safe, uh, but it was there was something it was blocking that I was unable to turn off. But I have a um, website blocker already, so it's a good idea to have one of those as well. All right, so the big thing is if you have something installed, you might need to uninstall it. Okay, and it, I mean if you have something installed, you want to uninstall it. I have the instructions here. So if you are get if there is software that you're using or excuse me there's software that you're not using anymore, um, it's a good idea to go in there 
and then basically uninstall it and your computer should speed up a little bit too. All right, so let's talk about password help and tips. A big one is do not use the same password for all accounts, okay? Strong passwords are easy to remember but hard to guess, okay? Here's an example. I am smiley face 2B29, exclamation point. This has 10 characters and says I'm happy to be 29, where it says I wish. So it's a full sentence. It's easy for you to remember, but that would be very hard to guess, okay? It's okay to write down your passwords. <gasps> Just keep them away from your computer and mixed in with other numbers and letters so it's not apparent that it's a password. Ooh, that's a good point right there. Or let's just say you write it down, throw the letter Z in there somewhere. If someone was actually able to get the notebook and they kept putting that in, then they would go, well, that's what it says the, the, um, the password is. And then you know it's not, it's not what it is, and then they couldn't get into your, um, your stuff. Have fun with known shortcut codes or sentences or phrases, to be or not to be, okay? You can also write a tip sheet, which will give you a clue or reminder for your password, but it doesn't actually contain your password on it, okay? For example, in the example above, tip sheet might be, might read to be or not to be, so you say tip sheet, okay? Don't tell anyone your passwords your trusted friends your your trusted friends now you might not be your friend in the future keep your passwords safe by keeping them to yourself depending on the sensitivity of the information being protected you should change your passwords periodically and avoid reusing a password for at least one year okay do do use at least eight characters of lowercase and uppercase letter numbers and symbols in your password. Remember, the more the merrier. Uh, best to have at least three different passwords, one that's very secure for online banking, moderate for email, light, and I actually have uh, uh, some examples of bad passwords. Bad passwords, yep. So this is a password generator by Nort, okay, and you basically can just hit here and it'll, it'll you can tell it what, what, how many letters you're looking for, let's make it 10, there you go, and it'll kind of even randomize it for you too. No, it doesn't like a 10. Okay, 11 makes it so much stronger. Okay, anyway, but if you scroll down here, it'll talk about, do you use any of these weak passwords? Is your password the word password? No, don't do that. Is it one, two, three, four, five, six? Is it QWERTY, like typing on the keyboard a child's name, you know, or it's using the same passwords? Don't do that. Why are those passwords weak? They're easy to guess or crack, really easy. If one of your logins is compromised, that hacker then has access to all of your services. What's the solution? Maybe generate it. You won't have to remember user can uh, if you use like a login software and they want you to use the Norton there's also a last pass as well as a good um, password manager the big thing with this is you could have all your accounts having different passwords and then you have a master password just for you you don't actually put it on any websites just for you to, to allow you to automatically log you in all right, so we've kind of come to the end of our class. Let's talk about what we covered. We talked about uh, uh, safety online, uh, safe online connection, excuse me. Know your online rights. We talked about scams, email, texting safety. What exactly is a VPN and do I need one? We talked about cyberbullying, malware, viruses, adware and we also talked about spyware how to stop malware passwords help and tips so any final questions
Any final questions? Okay, thank you so much for joining me today for our internet and safety security class. I hope you learned something new. Do you realize we have some other classes coming up next week? I kind of covered those a little bit earlier. Also, uh, tell f uh, friends or little bits and stuff about our fun classes. Our, 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 you know, we have a whole bunch of classes coming up. But also, let's make a turkey feather catch game in Scratch. Let's draw and animate a turkey. Gobble, 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 gobble. Also, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Curbside holds pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or call into the library with questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates. And don't forget, we're looking for 100 subscribers so that we can get our own unique uh, YouTube address or search YouTube for GCHRL videos and that'll take care of it. All right, thank you so much for being with me today. I hope you learned something new. And this is our last class for the week. So have a great Friday and a great weekend and I'll see everybody back here on Tuesday, right? For more classes, we do classes on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. So thank you so much for coming. See you next time. Have It's been kind of warm outside today, so maybe go outside, go for a walk. Uh, be positive, stay safe, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> so bye-bye. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.